colonial rule, pirates, slavery, and the production of sugar reshaped the Caribbean region. But we'll look into how it defines the rums we see today. Let's dive in. Hello, Hendo here, and welcome to Rum Region Deep Dive, the Caribbean. In this video, we will explore the world's most famous rum region in more detail. You'll find more on the Caribbean in my other videos, The Cane Volcano for geology and Is There Terroir in Rum. Here I'll cover history, regional styles, regulations, players, politics, and the state of play. Key emotional drivers of Caribbean rum is exotic warm climate vacations in the sun, sandy beaches and refreshing cocktails. Much of the rum sold is to the colder climate northern hemisphere where people want a taste of that warm Caribbean sunshine. After many ups and downs, Caribbean rum is back on trend. Premiumization, quality age spirit, resurgence of the cocktail culture, modern tiki. Rum was the spirit of choice during the pandemic, but I have to take you back where it all started in the Caribbean centuries ago. History. The colonial Europeans introduced sugarcane to the Caribbean uh, with uh, Columbus's second voyage in 1493 to Hispaniola. Now, the Portuguese also introduced sugarcane plantations in the 1550s off the coast of Brazil. The Dutch uh, conquered Brazil in 1630 and the Dutch were actually the sugar specialists in that era. Uh, until the English then developed on uh, Barbados, the island of Barbados. Early English colonies were in Barbados, Antigua, Jamaica by 1655. After the union with Scotland in 1707 became the British Empire. Uh, the colonies then developed with Grenada, Tobago, Dominica, St Lucia and then Guyana and Trinidad. Rum is first distilled by European colonists and African slaves from the 17th century in the Caribbean. The Portuguese, British, French, Spanish and Dutch colonists were all running sugar plantations. These were brutal conditions for enslaved people, labour intensive, most didn't live very long. Producing sugar was far more important than making rum. Molasses was tipped out into the sea before realising its value. Empires grew on the back of Chattel slavery, 1661 on Barbados by the English. Chattel slavery was an enslaved person, the legal property of a slave owner. Lucrative trade routes called the triangular trade shipped white gold of sugar and tobacco from the Caribbean East US coast to the UK. UK traded weapons, cloth and iron to Africa and then slaves were brought from Africa to the Caribbean. Then Caribbean had to shift trade from New England to UK after the American Civil War. George Washington had insisted on a hog's head of the finest aged Barbados rum for his 1789 inauguration party. It was a slow route to abolition, but the abolition of Chattel slavery in 1833 in the UK, 1865 in the US. Society now is only recently addressing these horrific practices. My city, Glasgow in Scotland, has a Caribbean footprint as a beneficiary of that being the centre of the UK sugar trade at the time. Now to regional styles. The Caribbean islands were pawns in the colonial battles of the past. Rum styles have been defined by this ever since. French, English, Spanish. Starting with the French West Indies, as Antilles goes back to the 1640s, Martinique, uh, Guadeloupe and Haiti. Agricole rum is a rum spelt with an H in it using fresh sugar cane juice spirit, famous today, but wasn't always made this way, had been molasses. Islanders switched to agricole, uh, becoming a point of difference when the sugar beet prices cheaper uh, produced in Europe killed off Caribbean sugar prices. 
Now, French Caribbean rums to this day still use French cognac making techniques, equipment like stills and casks. And Martinique, about 14 producers are governed by the rigorous French AOC Appellation d'Origine Control, uh, a regulation since 1995. Some bottles are labelled like French brandy, VO very special, rum pie, ombre, d'or, élève uh, sous bois, uh, young age two years usually, rum vu is three years old, VSOP very special old pale, aged at least four years, XO extra old is at least six years. French style rums are earthy, fruitier in the western of Martinique, vegetal on the Atlantic side, grassy and herbal. The phylloxera, the bug that killed brandy and wine in 1860s France, actually saved uh, French Caribbean rum. Uh, the French sailors in Bordeaux were given this as a daily tot. Production rose during World War I uh, and then dipped again in the 20th century. About 80% of Martinique rum exports go straight to France. One historical irony in 1806 is Frederick Tudor, the first ever shipped ice was from New England to the Caribbean island of Martinique. Uh, but you'll find that today um, the Martinique rums, you don't actually usually taste them with ice in them. Uh, like a tea punch, for instance, on Martinique won't be served with ice. Or even in Paris rum bars. Quite funny that. Onto the English style was defined by the English Navy and then the British Navy after the 1707 Union, uh, giving sailors a daily taut rum ration right up until 1970. British Caribbean rum style became the most widespread you'd probably see over time. Popular styles like black or dark rum, which is uh, young but coloured and sweetened, uh, navy strength rum and unaged overproof rum, the islanders like Bold flavours, rustic and woody. British colonial islands interlinked trade, including molasses from Guyana. And you can see this even today in some uh, Grenada and Barbados rums. Rums from Trinidad, uh, Jamaica and Barbados are the most revered. They're unadulterated style rums. On bottle labels, ages are numbered or XO for over six years. Now, some Jamaica pot distilled rums have this kind of funky uh, flavour and taste. You reuse Dunder, but not all. And uh, you also have in Trinidad Coroni, which is this iconic closed distillery. Now, Spanish style. Many of the colonies in the Caribbean were Spanish at one point or another. So most of the rums produced uh, do have a Spanish style to them, like Cuba, Puerto Rico, which is the highest volume export in the Caribbean. And uh, you also have uh, Dominican Republic. So Spanish rum, the colonists brought their brandy making equipment with them to the New World from Spain. And you'll see Solera system being used, which is uh, brought from Jerez in Spain. Año means aged four years, Año Especial up to five years. Gran and Año is a uh, blend of up to six years. Spanish made Aguente de Cana pre-Caribbean and Spanish called Rum Ron. The Bacardi family came from Spain and Spanish rums lighter Blanco for Mojitos and Daiquiris to uh, Añejados for aged, rich, rounded, full-bodied rums. All these styles have many distinct uh, flavours but where you live might define your style, uh, the geography of taste. I grew up in Scotland trying Jamaica and Barbados rums first. I was available to me at the time, so I acclimatised to those tastes and flavours, but now enjoy exploring all the Caribbean rums. And it was only really when I was working in rum in France for years, I learned to appreciate the French agricole Caribbean rums. Now to regulations, Caribbean community has the CARICOM rum standard uh, representing 20 countries uh, was first established in 1991. But the most rigorous regulations are the AOC French departments like uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe, you have Marie Galon. Very strict processes where and how you can grow sugar cane to make rum. Now, Jamaica has geographical indication 
uh, Barbados is trying to agree a GI. There's a West Indies Rum and Spirits Producers Association uh, with this mark. Uh, Cuba has a PDO, Designation of Origin. Uh, Dominican Republic has a DO. And I've listed many of these um, Caribbean rum regulations in my other video about terroir. The regulations fall away once the liquid is taken away from the Caribbean and then resold and rebranded without transparency. It could be sweetened, spiced and now also botanicals are added. There are many voices uh, for transparency and classification, clarification, which is long overdue as new brands profit from the heritage of others. The Gargano classification makes a good fist of it based on production techniques, but needs work. If you look at the French, Spanish or English as a way uh, to classify, this is way too simple for Caribbean rum. Better education will follow legislation. Now on to the players. There are industrial scale multi-column distilleries producing huge volumes of multi-purpose neutral spirits being bottled as rum. And then on the other end of the scale, there are artisanal hand-cut sugarcane single harvest agricultural rums. So you have big brands like Bacardi and Don Q in Puerto Rico cruising on US Virgin Islands. You have Havana Club in uh, Cuba. You have Ron Barcelo and Brugal on Dominican Republic. You have Rum Barbancourt, uh, Claren on uh, Haiti, Appleton's Estate and Worthy Park on Jamaica. Mount Gay and Foursquare on Barbados. Rum GM, uh, Clement and a dozen others on Martinique. Guadeloupe Damoiseau, Angostura and Closed Distillery Caroni on Trinidad, Chairman's Reserve and Admiral Rodney on St Lucia, uh, English Harbour on Antigua. The list goes on. Then you have independent bottlers like uh, Plantation Rum by Maison Ferrand, uh, Habitation Valley, Berry Brothers, uh, Cadden Heads, Banks, Maison, AH Risa in Denmark, brands like Priorat. Lambs, Black Tot, Myers Dark, Purser's Rum, Duppy Shear. There's hundreds more on sale depending which country you live in. Now politics, I could make a series of videos on Caribbean rum politics. So we're just going to skim over the surface here. Wars, US prohibition, Cuba, trade embargo, zero for zero tariffs. The list goes on. Today the elephant in the room is still the heavily subsidised markets of Puerto Rico and US Virgin Islands, their tax rebates. So Diageo has just uh, celebrated 10 years trading from there. Uh, the captain's huge competitive advantage allows an eye-watering global marketing budget to push home this and uh, push off smaller brands from the shelves of liquor stores. Now, the US-Cuba trade embargo means Cuban Havana Club doesn't sell in the US. Bacardi v Pernod Ricard, court battles continue over the name Havana Club. And uh, Pernod had made a deal with the Cuban government uh, way back in 1993 and sells 54 million bottles of Havana Club worldwide. And Bacardi has been selling Havana Club uh, made in Puerto Rico since 1995 to the US. During US prohibition, some American bartenders fled to Cuba uh, and the, on their return helped popularize the Cuban cocktail culture, the daiquiri and other classics we know and love today. Now the state of play. In 2021, you'll find many rum brands labeled Caribbean on your local liquor store shelves. Uh, many new brands are blends of rums from the region. Uh, they'll have uh, been sourced possibly through a bulk supplier, maybe from the Netherlands, uh, where they'll help with the uh, brand creation, the blending facility. Then it's shipped, bottled and branded in the UK or EU country. Also, you have uh, continental aging, where the Caribbean spirit is taken and brought to France or UK to be matured slowly. 
Remember, the Caribbean has about 8% angel shear, depending on where you are, and then finished, possibly in other casts like sherry, port, or whiskey casts, to be marketed with uh, Caribbean heritage. The category is being further complicated and diluted. There's a lack of brand and category education, which uh, confuses consumers. Caribbean rum is different to different people. So in the Caribbean itself, you'll find that overproof, unaged, strong rum has long been popular with locals. Any aged or premium rum gets shipped exported. In the US and UK, rum and coke is popular. French, low countries and Denmark, they like it neat or in tea punch. But generally, brands are moving towards premiumization. Caribbean rum, just look at how scarcity marketing is driving four square habitation value brands like this um, as they go straight on to rum auction sites to be flipped like whiskey. But remember, the age on the bottle is not like whiskey. Caribbean rum's quicker maturation means you can think about doubling the number since it's been tropically aged. So an EXO Caribbean rum feels quite mature spirit. I recommend looking behind labels and not getting caught up in numbers. Seek out distilling heritage and artisanal practices are a good place to start. Turning the tide are some exciting new producers like Renegade Rum on Grenada and I share the stand and the enthusiasm of Rum Hardy from Martinique at uh, Bordeaux Rum Festival just before the pandemic. Exciting young producers. So tell us what you think of Caribbean rum, uh, what's happening. Do you have any favourites at the moment? I will add more videos on this. And if you are interested uh, in rum projects, contact us at hendotalks.com. As always, welcome your feedback and comments. Uh, I hope this was useful to you in some way. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.